I'm pretty sure the Europeans at Marco Simone for the Ryder Cup will be seeking inspiration from that triumph. Let's rejoin Dharma Sheh now. Yes, thank you very much. Still all quite quiet here at Marco Simone Golf and Country Club as we count down to the start of the Ryder Cup. I am joined by the Golf Channel's Todd Lewis. Todd, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about the Ryder Cup in just a moment, but I just want to reflect on what happened over the weekend and the Solheim Cup, a 14 points each draw. What's been the reaction out in the States to this? Well, I, I guess the continuing theme when it comes to team competition, be it men or women, that Europe knows what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, they, they are so good at team competition. Uh, but I thought it was, it was great to watch these, these elite ladies compete against each other. Carlotta Saganda, obviously in her home country, helping secure or retain the Ryder Cup for Team Europe. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it, it's a continuing education for Team USA, regardless if you're the men or the women, on the fact that whenever they play Europe, it's a heck of a battle. You just said secure, I mean retain, <laughs> the, the Solheim Cup. Do you think maybe that we needed a result? Do you think that needs to change? You know, it's interesting because I can understand both sides of this argument. I mean, you, both teams going through the process uh, that started years before competition in getting these teams together and ultimately to go out there and battle and then there's a tie. Should there be a playoff? Some say yes. I mean, we ultimately somebody's got to win the Cup, be it the Solheim Cup or the Ryder Cup, because it could happen here as well. But then there's, uh, there are others who say, well, you, do you want to put the pressure on the back of maybe one player to, to win the Ryder Cup? So. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation that if, if we continue to have ties in these cups, you know, maybe one we need to have. Let's look ahead to this week. I mean, I've been walking around the course. It's pretty quiet at the moment. I've seen one or two players. I've seen a few of the caddies as well. Yeah. What, what are the movements of Team USA so far? Well, Team USA is arriving here uh, on Monday. They're coming here from the United States on Sunday. Three planes are bringing the team here to Italy. One plane carrying the vice captains, uh, Steve Stricker, Stuart Sink, and Fred Couples all played on the PGA Tour Champions at Pebble Beach. So that those three flew here from the Monterey Peninsula in California. Uh, Brooks Kepka and his caddy, uh, caddy Ricky Elliott competed at Live Chicago. So they flew from Chicago, but a majority, majority of the team gathered in Atlanta last night, departed just after 7 p.m. local time, and they arrived here in Italy this morning. Those Americans have the option to come out here and hit balls, see the golf course, and probably not going to play a practice round. Let's remember, they did have a scouting trip here to Barco Simone a couple of weeks ago. The entire team didn't come. Xander Schauffele, Patrick Cantlay, and Jordan Spieth were not part of that traveling group, so they have yet to see this golf course. Wow, wow that, is, that is interesting. I, I just want to ask you about the, the captain's picks from, from Zach Johnson. Lots of talk. And a tad of controversy as well, I guess, about Justin Thomas's inclusion. What's been the reaction in the States and how much pressure do you think there is now on, on Justin Thomas? Well, there's been about that much reaction in regards to Justin Thomas. They feel as if, let me, his fellow players will say that he is a generational talent. May not have had the best season on the PGA Tour, at least by his standards, and he'll be the first to admit it. But given his record in the Ryder Cup, given the energy that he brings to that team room and the rest of his teammates in my opinion and those who know golf it was not a surprise that he is on that team i think there is a bit of internal and external pressure for justin thomas but he has proven in these bigger moments that he can rise to that occasion the question is does he have confidence with his game he, he played well in his last start on the pga tour at a top 10 finish at the fortinet championship so i think he's got some of that back and i think this arena this vibe is going to pump him up even more. Well, one of the standout names, I guess, in, in the European team is, is a player who hasn't even played in a major yet, Ludwig Eberg. What's the, what's the view of him from, from, the, from the United States side? Because uh, he's been the talk of Team Europe so far. Yeah, they understand that he could be a generational talent as well. To do all those wonderful things in college, I mean, even as an amateur, he was playing well in these professional settings, be it the DP World Tour or on the PGA Tour. He has immediately gained the respect of the United States players. Sure, he does not have the confidence, I mean, the, excuse me, the experience, but uh, he sure does have the confidence. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the players that are going to face him on the United States side know that he is definitely not going to be a pushover. He is not a weak link on that team, even though he's a rookie. So the Team USA coming off a record-breaking 19-9 win from Whistling Straits from a couple of years ago, but Team Europe haven't lost on home soil right. since 1993. So who's under more pressure and who are the favourites for this week? 
You know, that's a great question because they both have those rallying cries. Zach Johnson, the first thing he said pretty much in the press conference after being named officially the captain for the United States team is like, we haven't won here in 30 years on European soil. So that's that's their cry. We want to change history or recent history, that is. And then, of course, the Europeans, I mean, it's a recent memory for them. There are many players on that European team that were just whitewashed by Team USA. Um, and after that loss, that significant loss, that entire European team had meetings and all the organizations said, we've, we've got to revamp things. We've got to change things in the way we do it, especially losing players like Sergio Garcia, Lee Westwood, and, and so on. So, so I think they're very motivated and they're excited. You mentioned A. Burke and the young talent that's kind of coming up now. Whereas the United States team, you know, maybe outside of Wyndham Clark, they don't have a lot of new young horses. Uh, so th there are a lot of storylines here, and that's what makes the Ryder Cup so great. Okay, final one. I'll put you on the don't spot. Do it. Who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you know, I. Well, that is a heck of a question. I, I, I do think the United States coming here, they learned their lesson in Paris. And the United States team, a majority of them, 75% of the team, coming here and seeing this golf course prior to Ryder Cup week is a big deal for them. Um, I think the United States team has a slight advantage. If I had to put a quid on, on somebody, it might be the United States team, but I would not feel confident about it because I think this European squad has a lot to prove as well. Um, and they've got history on their side, recent history, and the fact that they know how to win these cups. So I tell you, it's going to be a show. I'm so I'm so fortunate to be a part of this circus, so I'm looking forward to it. It's on tape. Todd Lewis says it is going to be Team USA to, 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 to win the Ryder Cup. And all three days, of course, are live on Sky Sports Golf. Don't miss it.